this video, I'm going to show you how I paint landscapes with real depth. The things I like to do first, the brushes I like to use, and my favorite colors for painting realistic landscapes. Hi, I'm Lane Johnson. Welcome to my studio. The supplies I'm going to use in this series is Strathmore Stretch Canvas, my Mary Puro oil paints, and a variety of my favorite brushes from Princeton Brush. Okay, we're gonna start with the number six Catalyst uh, Angle Bright. It's one of my favorite brushes to do block ends on landscape. We're starting here with the thing furthest away in the landscape, which are these background hills. And so you're gonna have some atmospheric perspective involved on this, which typically means a bluer cast to it. And uh, this is the base color I'm starting with. I probably will add more uh, nuances to these hills, but you gotta start somewhere, and this is the block end, so I'm using this color. Let's speed this up a little bit. I'm blending this using uh, the color Cerulean Blue, uh, Mars Brown, and a little bit of Ultramarine, of course, White. At the top of these uh, hills, I'm gonna be making them lighter because it's, they're going back further. So uh, we're employing the, you know, the concept of aerial perspective. And we're slowly covering up the imprimaturum. I'm gonna add a little bit of chrome oxide green in here as we come forward in the foreground. We're gonna start seeing more color. Not a lot though. So we're gonna define these edges around these middle ground trees. One of the questions I want to take on is on which side of these background hills do I want to have the lighter colors? And technically you can have both, but I'm going to play with this a little bit. I've got these lighter colors against these trees on the right, but I also want to have a, a stronger sunlight uh, color back here over here on the left side. I'm kind of using the edge of the brush to define some uh, other areas of tree highlights as the light would be hitting them on the side of the hill. Okay, I'm switching over to number six catalyst, uh, uh, Filbert. Filberts are good uh, treetop highlight brushes. Slowing back down to normal speed. While all the paint is wet here, you can kind of create a nice foggy effect. One thing I wanna make sure that I do here is basically not detail this background too much. Uh, I don't want to draw attention to something that's in the background uh, when other things in the foreground need the attention. So I, I want to be cautious blocking all these colors in not to go to detail, even though it's tempting to do so. Besides, you can gauge what you'll need later on by completing the rest of the, the landscape portion. Once the other areas are blocked in, you can decide if you want to add more detail in the background. Let's see, let's change angles a little bit here. And kind of see, I'm working around this, these uh, foreground, well, really middle ground trees and bushes. Uh, but I'm, I'm liking the way this is looking. I'm gonna blend these a little bit with this filbert. Okay, let's work on the trees here. I've got a number four Velvet Touch round. It's just perfect for doing details. I've already blocked in the basic portions of these trees. Uh, the colors are the dark colors. I generally always start with dark colors on the trees overpainting the basic, the underpainting. Uh, but one of the first things I do after I first block in the masses is go around the perimeter with some atmospheric uh, leaf textures. Let's speed this up a little bit. Switching over to a number three Catalyst Angle Bright. Kind of softly developing the edges of these trees. Uh, they'll help keep a tree looking more dimensional as the form goes around the top of the tree. What I don't want is a very hard uh, dark contour here. I want atmospherics. So this brush is working really good for that. Switching over to a number eight Velvet Touch Round brush. After getting the area of the middle ground blocked in with the darker values, uh, I'm coming in here with the greens. This has got some uh, chromium oxide green with a little bit of brown mixed into it to keep it toned down. And the white is tinting it to keep it not so bright. 
this brush is good for this uh, particular operation of blocking in. Uh, it gives the impression of detail instead of just so much exact detail. I've done something similar in the trees on the left and right. Dropping in the midtones. Dark tones first for me, then midtones, and then highlights afterwards. Back to a number three catalyst angle bright. I'm softly working these edges on this left side tree. Again, atmospheric kind of grayish greens are being used here. Let's speed this up a bit. I'm trying really hard to keep this tonal. Uh, again, not such a hard edge contour. They'll keep these middle ground trees, you know, atmospheric like they're further in the background than something that might be up close. Indication of detail is important. Going back to a number eight, Velvet Touch Round. This is a nice muted green, uh, same kind of color I blended before. Uh, I want these greens to be atmospheric, as I said before, and one of the ways to do that is, is get some white into it, but not a lot, and let the green do the work. You can always add your highlights after this and make it stronger if you want to, but this is the reason why I always go from darks to midtones to lights. Again, not detail, just give the impression of detail. It's still important to get the masses correct. Let's mix some highlight greens using some cadmium yellow light and a little bit of the uh, chromium oxide green, tempering it a little bit with some of the uh, burnt sienna. And of course, white. We're gonna keep the highlights a little bit brighter, not too bright. When I paint foliage, I typically will do it this way, but I will go back and forth with highlights, midtones, and darks to shape the foliage. I'm gonna go to a number four velvet touch round. These really are details. Uh, I'm doing that again out of guilty pleasure. I want to paint a few details. You got to be careful about doing this at this stage, but you know, don't go overboard on it. Going back to a number eight velvet touch round. I'm painting, these are sycamores. The, the leaves of a sycamore are large, really large. And these are young ones that are around water a little bit. So the color is just like this. They're a brighter green color. As it gets later in the summer, they'll get uh, more dingy. They are not so bright. But uh, at this time of the year, they're pretty bright. This is just block in, so who knows? Maybe later I'll come back in and tone them down. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to block in some cactus with a number two short filbert, uh, the Imperial. This is, again, that uh, nice chromium oxide green uh, mixture. You can mix it with white to get a kind of a cooler green to, to some of the, on the cactus, the way they, the paddles, the, the way they turn, you'll get different colors of green. And uh, this one's a really, it's the number two, it's pretty small, but it works really good to create cactus. Again, filberts are good for cactus, filberts are good for clouds, filberts, filberts are good for lots of things. As you can see, I've already laid in a bunch of the grass uh, so again, the impression of detail, not real detail. And I'm working on these uh, paddles. They're called paddles or pads of a cactus. And they have different color greens. They're not just one color. Cactus are kind of fun to paint. They're very different depending on what part of the country you're in. In, in West Texas, they have cactus that are purple. But these are just regular old uh, prickly pear cactus that we have here in Texas. Again, uh, depending on how close you are in your landscape, you might not see the detail that you would see of a cactus that's, you know, in the foreground, where you'll see the the, the cactus needles, the the pin, the pattern of the pin, so to speak, uh, and then of course the actual needles. Okay, I'm using a number four short dagger. It's an aspen line. Uh, what I'm working on here is I call it bear grass. Some people think it's yucca. I don't know exactly but they're, they're sharp. Uh, so this dagger is really, really good to get these particular pointy things. <laughs> I don't know what you call them, but uh, like I said, it's a fun brush to paint with. Let's go a little faster. Okay, we've got the bulk of the canvas covered. The imprimatur is covered up, and so this part of the painting is complete. We still have more details to do, but basically this stage of the painting is complete. 
Believe it or not, there are still lots of things to do. There are some adjustments to make, and there's some final details. There's still some wildflowers to paint, but not just yet. That's next time. Wow, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, the underpainting is now completely covered, and I was able to create a landscape using several tools and techniques. I was able to guide the viewer into the scene using some leading lines, and I created some drama by contrasting lights and darks. And of course, I used atmospheric perspective to create believable depth from the middle ground to the background. But the painting stopped finished. In the next video, I'm gonna show you my secrets on how to finish a painting.